EA and Activision are learning a very valuable lesson that you can only abuse your general public for so long or there's a backlash. It's a lesson Marie Antoinette learned herself the hard way when she faced a guillotine for her indifference towards her people and subjects. But I think much like Marie Antoinette, EA and Activision will remain defiant up into the bitter end. Well, as I was having explosive diarrhea, sitting on the toilet, praying to God for death, so that he may have mercy on my miserable soul. Prayer, the last refuge of a scoundrel. And lay me to rest before my butt explodes on my poor toilet yet again. Because in the end, the true loser in all of this is me, because I have to clean it. If only I had enough money to get myself a mail order bride like Phil Brunel. Damn you, DSP. You're always one step ahead of me. So Iron Lord Eva Unit 2 sent me this on Twitter while I was shitting my brains out. I do not need to know about these things, you filthy filth wizard. So Dreamcast Guy posted this from the Dow Jones newsletter. It was posted on the 23rd of January, 2018. I can't seem to get on it. I think you have to sign in, which from the site I was going to said so. So I figured maybe that is something there that I refuse to do. It's a dark day and age where some news is locked behind a paywall. Don't you think what little information they have to give to you, they'd want to nickel and dime you further for it. But anyway, and the article read, or this one excerpt by Sarah Needleman from the Wall Street Journal, who often writes stuff on the video game front, Outlook for Activision could be muddied by Destiny 2 market talk. Player dissatisfaction with Activision's Destiny 2 could put a damper on the company's performance of 2018, Cohen warns investors. The science fiction shooter online community has been expressing frustration lately with the game's monetization system, recent design changes, and the way the studio that made it has been communicating with players. As in not at all, or barely at all. Bungie communicates with players as well as YouTube communicates with small content creators. You really don't matter. And then when they screw up, they give you some sort of half-hearted apology. It's happened about three or four times now. Oh, we won't do this again. We're sorry. We now see that this was a bad idea. Oh boy. Until the next fuck up comes. The weird thing is, when Destiny is pulling its shenanigans, its horrible DLC that came out and turned off a lot of people, the Eververse, the locking endgame stuff behind the new DLC, so on and so forth, a lot of people were turned off to it, as you know. There were tons of big YouTubers who put out videos saying they were done with Destiny. There were tons of Twitch streamers who were also going to scale back their Destiny play. And I think it's even mirrored in this article here. Uh, it says some high profile streamers of the game recently announced intentions to scale back the broadcasting of it. And data from research from Nuzu show that Twitch viewership is down by 1.8 million hours last month compared to a year ago. Cohen says it's concerned that Destiny 2 won't generate as much reoccurring revenue from in-game sales as expected and I quote, could be at least partially offset upside from Activision Call of Duty franchise. I don't know what the fuck that means to be honest between you and me. Meanwhile, at Activision Blizzard. Can I have the room for a minute? Everybody out. My empire is crumbling! Uh, right, everyone back in? So it seems they're feeling the burn, and the one thing that these companies are relying on at this day and age is reoccurring spenders. They're looking at games as service, these wonderful little buzzwords they came up to essentially try and make it sound nice. Uh, I mean, come on. Okay, here, here's a good example. Now, rape, it sounds horrible, but it doesn't sound very bad if you call it a snuggle struggle. <laughs> That's essentially it. <laughs> They're in a snuggle struggle with your wallet and they want that money, bitch. So, odds are they're probably shitting bricks. And if their whole game plan, which all these big companies are game planning on, the whole online, always online games, the reoccurring spending, microtransactions, 
real money trading for in-game currency, loot box, bullshit, whatever the fuck they can come up with. If they can't get this, what would be next? What would be the next move for them? What next mischievous, sneaky, underhanded BS could they pull together to rip money out of your fucking pocket? One could only imagine. CNBC also had a further bit of the article. It's the only thing that I could find that I could actually read. Uh, Activision's Destiny 2 is struggling as gamers are unhappy over microtransactions, the analysts say. Cohen is the guy we just talked about, reiterates that the market performance rating on Activision Blizzard shares citing increased evidence players are leaving the Destiny community. That's because the game fucking blows. I'm sorry, it does. I played the beta. I played the first one, then I played the beta for the second one. It's not for me. I mean, God, it felt like the second one was a continuation of the same bullshit. It was a linear story. I mean, there was more story in the second one than the first one, but really, how hard is it to make more of a story for Destiny 2 than 1? Just like Star Wars Battlefront 2 for 1. I mean, really, how hard is it to add a little bit of a... It's like, before you got, like, a cupcake. Then Destiny 2 and Battlefield 2 came out, or Battlefront 2, whatever, came out, and then you got a little frosting on the cupcake, and they gave your bitch ass some sprinkles. And everyone was like, oh my god, so much story. I'm like, yeah, I guess so. I mean, there's no incentive to stay. I don't think Bungie and Activision know what the fuck they're doing anymore. They have no clue how to make an RPG. A shooter RPG at that. Really. Destiny 2 is struggling right now with player engagement. Appearing to be on the wane, analyst Doug Krutz writes in a note to clients on Tuesday entitled, Destiny is not in a good place. Those clients are probably investors. The game's microtransaction implementation, while not nearly as problematic as the Star Wars Battlefront 2 one, has still been a source of player unhappiness, he adds. Oh, gee whiz, what? What? You mean people don't like being dicked around and trying to be milked endlessly for money? Like some poor old cow no longer able to give birth to a calf or produce milk, but the farmer's still down there squeezing on her dried out tits? What's shocking is you find out Call of Duty is doing very well. But then again, when you pair Call of Duty versus what Destiny 2 is doing and what Battlefield 2 is doing, of course Call of Duty would do well in the wake of that. Even though Call of Duty is real fucking linear, that shit is becoming like a parody of itself. While Call of Duty 2 clearly had a great holiday, which likely sets up strong franchises, live service revenues in 2018, we are a bit cautious that potentially disappointing live service revenue there could at least partially offset upside from COD in 2018, he said. Still don't know what that means. He said several key Destiny video game streamers have announced that they will reduce content for the game in the future. He noted Twitch viewership for the game, its franchise game is at franchise lows, level averaging 4,000 to 7,000 views on Friday afternoon versus 14,000 to 17,000 for Destiny 1 one year ago. Well, that's because Destiny 1 was new. You know the old saying, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, shame on you. I mean, come on, the people caught on. Destiny 1 was not the hype beast that they said it was going to be. Destiny 2 has been very lackluster. Surely many mechanics have changed for the better, but overall it's the same fucking experience with extra loot boxes. Some stuff that used to be part of the game is now locked behind a paywall. What do you expect? I mean, fuck. I can't even think of a perfect analogy for this. It'd be like buying a guitar and then finding out your low E string was locked behind a paywall by Gibson guitars and you had to send them a payment every couple months to get access to it or else you weren't playing Stairway to Heaven the same way everyone else likes to hear it, little babies. Uh-oh. As a result, the analysts are not optimistic the company will be able to turn the Destiny franchise around. Yeah, it's pretty much over. Um, maybe, you know, you assholes should have hired someone like me. And I would have been able to help a little bit. I would have came in there and I would have said, listen. Um, shaders, that has to stay free. What the fuck are you doing? I mean, really. Two, could we get some better story elements? Three, this Curse of Osiris DLC should have been included in the game. It's nothing here. People are going to see this. You're going to look at it. And it's going to feel like the equivalent of you pissing their mother's face. The only people who are going to look at this and go, this is great, are the ones drinking the Kool-Aid. And I hate to tell you, not that many people are drinking the Kool-Aid. Therefore, it wouldn't be a good idea to just put out something so lackluster. Oh wow, this is some bad news for Destiny. Uh, and I quote, we also noted that Destiny currently has some serious competition in the genre from Refurbished Division. I'm hearing the Division is actually getting better. 
Too bad it took them like, what, two years to make it better? I have the game, but I don't have the energy to log in. And also, the indie title Warframe has been kicking the living fuck out of Destiny. I mean, I know a lot of people who are playing Warframe. And they're even happy with the monetization system. Like, you have two choices. You can either actually get the weapon you want, and it'll take you like 24 hours to build it and get all the parts and schematics or something. Like, you can get the parts and schematics, but it takes 24 hours for it to build when you set it up. Or, you could just... I don't know, use a microtransaction if you really wanted to, but keep in mind that Warframe's a free-to-play game. Sometimes the microtransactions are a bit more tolerable in a game that's free-to-play and it doesn't lock you out of getting some stuff you want. Maybe it's something that these big companies could learn from. Maybe it's something Activision and EA could learn from. I mean, God, if people are paying for the game, why don't you give them a fucking game? All this microtransaction stuff, this reoccurring spenders and games as service garbage, it's not cool. It's like super dickish it really is it's like what do you want to do do you really want to push the community so far that they actually stop playing your game and buying stuff from you like because that's what you're doing it's like they're the soup nazi from seinfeld you can only shit on everyone so far before they find a way to fuck you back i mean i'm looking at going back to motorcycle riding like for real i'm thinking of giving up on gaming and just going back to the motorcycle track day crap as a hobby because this is just becoming repugnant at this point. It really is. And on top of that, with the miners and the cost of graphics cards, I know it'll go down, but it's really turning me off too. There isn't much incentive for me right now. Good games are few and far between, and the second you get excited for something, they turn around and slap you in the face and tell you there'll be some sort of form of microtransactions or some sort of DRM bullshit. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad that people have turned around on it. On top of that, com competition really is a big factor. Because frankly, if the publishers and the game developers are pissing you off to the point of where you're like questioning why bother playing the game, it seems like they forget that you have other options. There's so many games out right now. There's so many things you can do. Hell, you don't even have to do gaming. You can get on Tinder, meet a chick and have some lunch. I mean, you have options. And let these fuckers know. Never for a second let them think that they got you in your grasp. No, fucker. People shouldn't be afraid of their game publishers the game publishers should be afraid of them yes mr smokey we're getting out of here unfortunately it is time for very furious diarrhea i would record myself screaming because i think people find it funny but the sounds of wet turds hitting water i don't think is what anybody's interested in even for a comedic factor unless it was like some sort of jack black movie and on that note i'm out of here rate comment subscribe so choose to if not to help it because I can't ask anyone to give a shit in the age of apathy. The age of incredulity. In all honesty. I mean, really. I really can't. And I don't have it in me to sit here like other YouTubers who do these sort of videos about information. Letting people know what's up. And then saying, hey, turn around and support my Patreon. Now, you don't have to give me a dime. You don't have to give me jack if you don't want to. If you're kind enough to follow me, that's enough. Because frankly, that's all I'm in it for.